Today we're making lo mein that is as good or even better than your favorite restaurant takeout, which according to the internet, you can totally do as long as you have some Italian pasta on hand. Saute some random vegetables, add your bucatini and some soy sauce and sugar, and magically, and against all odds, you've got yourself some craveable, totally authentic lo mein. Obviously, this is complete bullshit. If you've ever tried to make your own takeout lo mein at home, there's a really good chance that it sucks as much as this one. Now, normally, this would be your fault, or my fault, but I'm not judging you at this exact moment because I'm too busy judging the food bloggers whose recipes are actually at fault here. Good news, everyone! I figured out why all those recipes suck. They tell you that you can substitute pretty much everything on the ingredients list. If you're offering substitutions, for things that are gonna actually ruin the dish, you're setting your reader up for failure. So let me save you some time. If you don't have some kind of alkaline egg noodle or you don't have oyster sauce or hoisin sauce in the house, don't bother making lo mein. It's not gonna taste anything like what you would get from takeout because these are the main ingredients. And if you try to substitute it for, I don't know, soy sauce and sugar, you're gonna get something that not only doesn't taste like lo mein, but is actually legitimately awful. Let me explain why you can't substitute any of this stuff. And since noodles make up like 90% of this dish, why don't we start there? Lo mein is traditionally and still typically made with Chinese alkaline egg noodles. These noodles have two defining characteristics, the bouncy texture and the distinctly alkaline flavor. The bouncy texture is actually as important to Chinese noodles as the quality of al dente is to Italian noodles, but it's the exact opposite. Al dente noodles actually break when you bite them, whereas these guys stand up to chewing. If you still think that it doesn't matter what kind of noodle you use, let's do a quick comparison. This is your standard bucatini which the chick from Damn Delicious claimed that we could substitute for alkaline egg noodles. It's made with semolina, which has a really distinct nutty flavor. The dough is a high hydration dough, upwards of 56%, which has a distinct impact on the final texture of the noodle. Also, dried noodles like this don't typically have eggs in them because adding egg to these kinds of noodles would just shorten the shelf life. Cooked to an ideal texture, these are, as we discussed, al dente. These egg noodles, on the other hand, are made with high gluten common wheat flour, which tastes nothing like semolina. And in addition to that, they have an alkaline solution composed of potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate, which gives it that distinct flavor and also contributes to the bouncy texture. And if that wasn't enough difference, these are also made with really low hydration dough. And since you can buy them fresh frozen, they almost always have eggs in them. So when you compare these two things, they look nothing alike. And you cannot expect to be able to substitute this for this and come out with the same result. Moving on, this is oyster sauce. It is one of the most omitted and maligned ingredients in any of the recipes that I looked at. Oyster sauce was created about 130 years ago when some dude in Guangdong let his oysters boil over, and he realized that the resulting brown sludge at the bottom of the pan tasted really friggin' good. So he made it into a sauce called Panda Brand Oyster Sauce, and then he created the Ligunki company to sell it, which is now worth $15 billion. Because it was so portable and because it tastes so great, it quickly became a staple of Cantonese cuisine from which almost all of our American Chinese food stems. Chop suey, oyster sauce. Mugugai pan, oyster sauce. Egg foo young, you guessed it, oyster sauce. So the idea that you can completely omit it from a recipe such as this or substitute something like soy sauce and sugar to me is just absurd. Now, if you're vegetarian, you can actually substitute something like hoisin sauce, which is much sweeter, but still has that umami kick and it also sort of lends a thickness to the sauce. And of course, it is a damn sight better than soy sauce and sugar. So here you have the things that you literally can't make this dish without. But there are also other ingredients. What about the vegetables? I would argue that the vegetables aren't really what you're craving, so it doesn't matter all that much. However, one of the things that I saw in a ton of the recipes was spinach, which I've never had in a take-home lo mein container and I honestly don't think works very well. I'd use something like bok choy or napa cabbage instead. And the one thing that you don't see but is definitely there in that sauce is ginger. If you don't have fresh ginger, a lot of these people were recommending substituting um, powdered ginger, which is ridiculous. It tastes like pie spice. So just omit it. It won't be quite as good, but it's gonna get you like 90% of the way there. Today we are keeping this recipe super freaking simple. We've got 12 ounces of alkaline egg noodles, got a couple of leaves of Napa cabbage, a freaking giant carrot, ginger, garlic, green onion, and of course, baby corn. 
For the sauce, we've got your oyster sauce, soy sauce, sesame oil, a little bit of sugar, and three tablespoons of chicken stock. You can't really substitute Western style stock because the mirepoix flavor sort of messes everything up. If you don't have chicken stock, just use water. It's not gonna make that much of a difference. Chop up your ginger and garlic, but not too fine because otherwise it'll burn in the hot oil. Separate out the hard bok choy stems from the leafy greens because they'll cook at a different rate. Slice up those leafy greens and set them aside. Now we're gonna julienne the hard stems and the carrots and set them aside together because they'll cook at the same time. Coarsely chop the white parts of the green onions and add them to the leafy napkin cabbage greens because they'll cook at the same time. Thinly slice the green parts, they're gonna be our garnish. The baby corn does not need any prep, good right out of a can. Now we're gonna pre-mix our sauce because there is nothing worse than hustling your ass off to do it while everything else is burning in a hot pan. We're gonna go in with three tablespoons of oyster sauce, which is sometimes hard to get out of the freaking bottle, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, one teaspoon of sugar, and add three teaspoons of chicken stock, and we're gonna mix that guy up. On to the actual cooking process. I'm turning the fire up as high as it'll go, which I don't know if you can see, and I'm going to let the sucker heat up until it smokes. Now I'm gonna wipe the pan out and add about two tablespoons of fresh peanut oil, or you can use any other oil with a high smoke point. In with the aromatics and stir that around until it's fragrant, but not until it burns, so no more than like 20 seconds, because that oil is really hot. Now we'll add the Napa cabbage stems and carrots since they're gonna take a little longer to cook and let them go for about a minute. Then we're gonna add the leafy bits and green onion and really only cook that for about 30 seconds because it's gonna finish after we add the noodles and we don't wanna end up with a bunch of mush. Turn the heat off, add the noodles and toss them around a little to loosen them up. The residual heat in the pan is gonna warm them through as we add the sauce and toss it all together but it won't burn it. And that's it, we got lo mein. All right, so let's get some noodles. Mm. Mm -hmm. The dominant flavor is definitely the oyster sauce. You got that little bit of sweetness, this huge kick of umami, this amazing sort of subtle funk, if you will. And in addition to that, the actual noodles are just perfection themselves. They're chewy, they're bouncy, they're exactly like the noodles that I would get from my favorite takeout place. Okay, so I feel like we have fixed the damn delicious recipe as well as tackled a ton of the other shitty recipes out there and come up with something that is as close to takeout as you can possibly get. So if you like the video, press like, and then subscribe, because there's more coming up. Next time is gonna be skillet lasagna. What the f ever that is. And if you have any other shitty recipes that you know about, or just like food that you can't quite get right, let me know, either in the comments or on Instagram, at Zesty Pavlova. All right, stupid food fixed. Adios, amigos. <laughs> <laughs>